I'm so hungry. T Tessa, why are you here? I told Date I was hungry, so... I've always wanted to eat here. I'll have my usual, Ota. Y yes, right away. Ota's omelet rice is so good, it gives me stomach cramps. Is that a compliment? <laughs> You're embarrassing me. Well, Ota appears to have taken it as a compliment. She's in the living room. I think she's watching TV. How about you? What are you doing here? I was just doing some meditation. Lying on the ground. He means sleeping. Date? Why are you with Tessa? <laughs> we are. Not Shovel Forge. On a date. Oh, a date. Huh. A date? I'm on an investigation, and she wouldn't let me go. Date, I have some delicious fugu eggs. I promise they're not poisoned. Would you like some? No thanks. I'm fine. You're still looking for him? Well, like I told you before, I don't know. Yeah, my dad taught me when I was little. You're making me something too, right? Sure. My treat, Date. Salt, pepper, a blend of red cayenne and spices, and an unidentified liquid. Mayumi's juice with mold? Roda Kazuaki's Grilled Tongue with Salt. Ring ring, who's on the phone? Who cares? Date, you're drooling. Oh, I'm just really hungry. Oh, that's Payashi Samba's Hayashi Vangole. Who? You don't know? It's good luck to imitate a cat in front of one of these. Really? Meow? Guess I'll have good luck! Hey Date! I've got this video of girls in bikinis washing this armored car! Wanna watch? Absolutely not. has two hands on its face. A mom playing peekaboo! Uh, yeah, exactly! Yeah, I have! Have you met Ota's mother, Mayumi? Yeah, but... I don't think she likes me. That's not true! Mom is just jealous of how pretty you are, Tessa! Not very reassuring. Whether out of jealousy or otherwise, she still doesn't like Iris. Iris, about your coming back to life. Hold it! What do you mean, coming back to life? Uh... Date jumped into a parallel world where I'm still alive! Tessa... 
right? Yep. Hey, can you tell me about this parallel world idea in more detail? Oh, sure. How should I explain this? Well... Um... Oh, I know. Let's play rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors? Yeah. If we tie, nothing happens. We just shake hands. If I win, you have to give me something. What if I win? I'll do anything. A anything? Mm-hmm. Anything. Date, your heart rate is rapidly increasing. Why exactly is that? All right, let's do this. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, shoot. Shoot! Yay! I won! Oh, no, 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 no. You see, this, this looks like scissors, but it's actually paper. That doesn't make any sense. No, why did I throw out scissors? Why? You're really not taking this well. So, I get my prize! I don't have any money. I don't want money. Instead... Yeah? Can you pet my head and say Iris is a cutie cutie? The cutest person in the whole wide world? A cutie angel? Fine. Iris is a cutie cutie. No, no, no! Put your heart into it! Iris is a cutie cutie. The cutest person in the whole wide world. A cutie angel. <laughs> We just played rock, paper, scissors, right? I won and you pet me. But in a different timeline, maybe we tied. Or maybe I obeyed your orders and did something really scandalous. Rewind time, do it now! I do not have that functionality. So those timelines are what I'd call a parallel world. So you think I jumped from a world in which you were dead to this one where you're alive? That's what I think. Huh. Parallel world, huh? I can't believe it, but... Sure you can! Parallel worlds exist. Do you know about the Mandela effect? Or the Booba Kiki effect? Or the 100 million balls? If I explain that, would you believe me? Sounds really interesting, Tessa. I know some urban legends like that. The spatial temporal man, and the lost friend, and the story of two sisters. Dante, look at this picture! There's a famous experiment regarding this picture. You show this image to people around the world and ask a question. Which one is Booba, and which one is Kiki? Believe it or not, 98% of people asked have the same answer. The rounder one is Booba, and the jagged one is Kiki. Isn't that weird? In other words, everyone thinks that Booba is a certain way, and Kiki is the other. It applies universally across languages and cultures. It's like something ingrained inside all humans. Like worshipping the sun and the sea. Or thinking that the mother is soft and the father is jagged. Regardless of your culture or background, you probably think this way. It's what Jung called the collective unconscious. There exists a second psychic system of a collective, universal, and impersonal nature, which is identical in all individuals. That's what Jung said about it. Think of it like bamboo. Bamboo stalks look like individual plants since they're separated. But underground, they're all connected. Human psyches might be like that too, connected at a subconscious level. That's... The parallel world? Yeah! You saved me in the dream, right? And dreams are all about our subconscious minds. So if you follow the roots... You get to another bamboo stalk. Yeah, something like that. This world is full of really interesting stuff. But you know the most interesting thing of all? No, what? That humans exist at all. The universe developed in a very particular way to get here. If things were even slightly different, well, the galaxies and solar system and all of that might not have existed at all. 
And that means humans would never be born. And even if everything happened exactly like that, the probability of human life developing is extremely low. And yet, here we are. Imagine a box full of ping pong balls, labeled one to a hundred million. Would you be able to pick out the one? Not likely. But what if there were 100 million of you? Well, then one of us would definitely pick up the one. Exactly! The birth of humanity is so improbable that it's basically a miracle. But if there were multiple universes... Then it wouldn't be strange that at least one of them had humans in it. She is describing the anthropic principle. I may have underestimated her intelligence. Do you know Nelson Mandela? Well, yeah! The former president of South Africa. He helped abolish apartheid. He died in 2013, but a strange thing happened. When the news broke, people all over the world thought, didn't Mandela die in prison in 1980? That's the Mandela effect. It's when your memory and history have discrepancies. There are lots of examples. Like the name of this kid's book with the bears having different spellings. Or people remembering that Kennedy was assassinated in a four-seat car. But in our world, he was in a six-seat car. Huh. I thought it was a four-seater, too. Or that electric mouse from that video game. You probably remember the tip of its tail being black. It wasn't? Nope. It's all yellow. And the design didn't change. Oh... Lines from movies, company logos, historical events, and little things. The Mandela Effect is everywhere. Why do you think that is? Because those memories are from parallel worlds? That would explain it, I guess. Yeah, it's sort of like a common experience. A lot of people have experienced waking up in an uninhabited world they've never seen before. And most of them describe seeing the same person. The Spatial Temporal Man. He's supposed to be an ordinary old man wearing work clothes. The Spatial Temporal Man guides people back to the real world. He tells them, this world is not for you, or something. I'd like to meet him someday. So, this elementary school kid, let's call him C. He goes to school and there's a bunch of things on the floor. Postcards, towels, a coffee cup, rice bowls, a sink, lots of stuff. But C realized that those were all things from his own house. How did they get to the classroom? No one knows. It's not like anyone did it on purpose or there was a thief or anything. Maybe something happened that made two parallel worlds fuse. Yeah, maybe. So, there's this girl. Let's call her... B. She's practicing piano in her room, and her little sister is watching TV in the same room. B asks her to turn the TV volume down so she can hear her piano playing, you know? So B goes back to practicing, playing a little bit but her sister doesn't turn the volume down. She's not listening at all. So B turns around to scold her. She was really gonna let her sister have it, but she's gone. She's nowhere to be seen. She thinks, huh, I wonder where she went. But then B hears her sister at the door. I'm home. B runs to the front door and sees her sister and her parents standing there. So B asks, when did you go outside? But her mom says, What are you talking about? She went shopping with me. B is really confused by all of this, of course. She asks her little sister about it. And she learns that her favorite TV show was on. And before she went shopping with her mom, she was deciding whether or not she wanted to stay and watch it or not. So depending on her decision, a parallel world was made. Yeah. What B saw might have been from the world where her sister stayed behind. There's this kid, A. He's in elementary school. Well, A had this close friend named Suzuki. One day, after school, they're walking home together. 
A turns around to tell Suzuki a joke, and Suzuki is laughing his butt off. And he's laughing and laughing, and he laughs so hard that his eyes fall out of their sockets. What? Well, they were hanging down out of his eye sockets. The nerves were still connected, but... A is, of course, in shock and doesn't know what to do. Suzuki just takes his eyeballs and jams them back into his eye sockets and keeps walking like nothing happened. So A asks him about it. Like, hey, are you okay? Your eyes fell out. A is really concerned for his friend, you know? But Suzuki just says, yeah, I'm fine. He doesn't say anything about it. And by now, A is really curious, but he's not getting any answers. So they just part ways and go home. The story only gets weirder from here. The next day, A goes to school, and Suzuki's not there. A is confused and asks his teacher about it. Hey, where's Suzuki today? And the teacher says, Suzuki? Who's that? There's no Suzuki in this class. A says, what are you talking about? And he goes and asks all of his classmates about Suzuki. They all say the same thing. I don't know him. There's no Suzuki in this class. So that kid must have jumped into a parallel world without Suzuki. That's what I think. Couldn't Suzuki just be an imaginary friend or something? No. A was really serious about remembering Suzuki. It is weird, and there's no way you could pop your eyeballs back in like that. Well, not necessarily. There's such a thing as a dislocated eye. It actually isn't too hard to put your eye back in if it falls out. Ota is correct. Dislocated eyes are easy to replace in their sockets. As long as none of the nerves or blood vessels were damaged, there are usually no lasting negative effects either. But that doesn't prove this Suzuki exists. Well, I guess not, but... When did you two get so knowledgeable? Oh, I don't know. Tessa is always writing about this stuff on the internet. That's why I decided to research it too. That's how I learned all this stuff. Oh, hey, I know about conspiracies and secret societies too. I find that stuff fascinating. If you want, we could talk about those. Maybe next time. Now where's that omelet rice? Done! Bon appetit! Tessa, are you okay? I'm fine. My hand slipped. Let's eat! Ah! Thanks for the food! Good. Ota, your omelet rice is seriously the best. Yeah, it was actually really good. Aw, oh, thanks. I owe it to my dad. He taught me well. Let's get going, Iris. Thanks again! Thank you! Come back soon! Mama, it's me. Dante, honey, what's up? I'm heading over now. Glad to hear it. Maybe I'll close the place a little early for you. Uh, sorry, but I'm with someone. With someone? A girl named Iris. What? Is she a virgin? Huh? I'm not gonna answer that. Anyway, remember what we talked about? There's a regular here who was good friends with Ren. They should be here tonight. Oh, right. Are they coming tonight? 
Yes, I promise. All right, then I'll see you there. Okay, I'll be here. How are you talking on your phone without earphones? I have an earpiece implanted in my ear. Wow, cool! Date, it's the boss. <sighs> I have a bad feeling about this. Okay, Date, tell me the situation. Did you find number 89? If I did, I would have told you. Aha. Uh -huh. I see. Hmm. What was that about? That was a cry from deep within my heart, Date. Do you realize how screwed I am? Go find number 89. If I find Renju, I find number 89. I'm gathering information on Renju's whereabouts now. Trying to get her drunk? She's not 21. And if she wasn't a minor? Hmm? Well, whatever. I'm sure you have a good plan. Find those two and arrest them. Got it? So this is Golden Yokocho. First time here? Yeah. Marble is right over here. Date, on your six. Two suspicious individuals approaching. Stay right there. Okay. Single revolver. Give you instructions. Just move as I tell you. This better work. Not to worry. My calculations are flawless. What's the plan? You see that hanger over there? Shoot the bottom of the hanger with a normal bullet. Why? Don't ask questions, just do it. <sighs> Like a gift from heaven! Are they stupid? Just as I calculated. What kind of calculations did you do? Dante, focus! Now, the burst shot. Shoot the porno mag vending machine. The porno mag? I said no question! Hurry! Shoot the vending machine with the burst!
Hey, this is... This is crazy! I've never seen anything like this before! Yeah, they must be stupid. You are too. What? The final step. But you don't have to do a thing. Hello? Mama? There's a group of naked buff guys dancing outside your bar. There's... What? Don't use my voice without permission. This is an emergency. I will slap you if you don't shut up. Now, we're ready. We just need to use the fire extinguisher. It's loaded with high-pressure CO2. Now, I will leave your eye and throw the fire extinguisher into the air. Shoot the top of the extinguisher at the perfect time. Now let's go! Ready? Here I go! According to my calculations. This is... My place. The building's got a security system. We'll be... So Mizuki's not home? Doesn't look like it. I checked her phone's GPS. Mizuki is currently at Sunfish Pocket. Iris, I need to talk to you about earlier. Have a seat wherever. Those guys who tried to kidnap you, do you have any idea who they were? There's a reason I asked you to go on a date so many times. I wanted you to protect me. I wanted a bodyguard. But I thought that if I told you the truth, you wouldn't believe me. That's why I didn't tell you. But now, I'll come clean. My life is being threatened by a secret society. They're called the Nizet Laws, a group under the control of the Wajet system. Their ultimate goal is to complete X00639. I discovered them and what they were up to, and now... Date, please help me! They're going to kill me! Wait, wait. Slow down. It's spelled N-A-I-X-A-T-L-O-Z. Sometimes they just call themselves the Nice. They're deeply connected to the Wajet system. Their organization is everywhere. International politics, business leaders, all operating in secret. In geosynchronous orbit around the equator, longitude 100 degrees east, there's a satellite. It's about 150 feet long quite big for a satellite. True. 
Most satellites are between 5 and 10 feet long. The International Space Station is roughly 330 feet long, so this satellite she is describing is about half as big. It's always in the same place, and there's no doubt that it's man-made. But by who? And when it was launched, no one knows. Also true. The first to discover this satellite was a space advocacy group in Japan. It was on the news for a short while. No one could identify it precisely. Most people thought it was some secret U.S. military satellite and that was it. But that's not the truth. X00639 is a super-powered radio transmitter. Radio? Transmitter? But it's not complete. It's still being built. And that's what they're trying to do. That's what Wajet wants them to do. Well, you know about the Wajet system, right? It's the core of artificial intelligence. Do you know where it came from? It was developed by the American tech conglomerate, Elgorg. But no specifics have been revealed. Basically, the Wajet system artificial intelligence is from outer space. It was transmitted to Earth in binary as radio waves. They were caught by the space dev team at Elgorg. And when they decoded it, they found that it was a truly incredible source code. That's the code they used to create the Wajet system. Is this true, Iva? It is patently ridiculous. I managed to learn that too. They're building X00639 so they can transmit their own data to a planet far away. If they contact a sentient species, then the process will repeat itself again. That species will decode the signal, create an AI, then builds a radio transmitter. Because they're an AI, they can create copies of themselves for transmission. Doing this over and over means that Wajet will eventually spread across the universe. And after that? After that? Yeah. After they're spread all over space, what do they do next? I don't know. You don't know? Well, why do humans have children? It's the same thing. Wajet is alive. They want to spread across the universe. That's their destiny. Nyes and Wajet have a mutually beneficial relationship. Wajet can control stock prices. Nyes benefits from that. In return, Nyes helps Wajet's ultimate goal. That's why Nyes is in militaries and corporations all over the world. To help build X00639. Let's say that one day Wajet shows up on your computer screen. Hi guys, nice to meet you. Wanna help us out? Do you really think humans would help? Most people would probably think their PC has a virus or something. Or they'd panic and try to remove them. I don't know what would happen. I'm sure Wajet made their own predictions. And they thought it was best to control certain parts of humanity from behind the scenes. But they needed some kind of direct influence. They can't build a satellite by themselves, right? That's why they created Nizet Laws. All right, I get it. You do? Not really, but she doesn't need to know that. <sighs> but listening to your explanation, Nice doesn't sound like a bad organization. No, that's not true. Think of how much money and resources are going to Nice. Think of how many people are suffering in poverty. And all the wars happening across the planet. And human trafficking and slavery. Nice has the power and resources to put an end to all of that. But they don't. They only care about themselves, and they'll do anything to protect their own interests. They'll kill if they have to, which is why I'm being targeted. 
because I found out their secret. Well, I can't say yet. But it's true, believe me! Nice is dangerous! You have to understand, Date! You... you saw my dead body! Do you think that you were killed by Nyes in the parallel world? Yes, I think so. You're the only person I can trust. Please, don't leave me. You have to protect me. You can't tell me that you actually believe this. Aiba, you use the Wadjet system too, right? So what if I do? Do you suspect me, Date? Do you think I'm an agent of Nice? Fine. This can be solved easily. Why not look into her mind? Then you will discover if her story is true or not. A sink. Of course. right now not sure I don't think she's at abyss anymore maybe she went home pewter I need to know something does a sink machine exist outside of abyss there's only one sink machine in the entire world and it's with us in abyss. For now, anyway. For now? The Chiba Police Department was working on a prototype, but it was stolen six years ago. Stolen? Yes. It was being transported when it was attacked and then stolen by an armed group of men. The culprit is still on the loose. The device was never recovered either. Iba, were you aware of this? No. This is new information. I was not even aware there was a prototype. So, neither you or Boss are at Abyss right now? No. Thanks, Pewter. See you later. Sure thing. Dante, where are we going? Inside your dreams. What? I'm gonna sync with you to determine if what you were telling me is true. And if it is true, I'll fulfill your wish. My wish? You don't remember? To become your bodyguard. Is that all right? Yes, of course! Yes. 
The time limit is six minutes, as always. I know. All right. Let us begin. What is this place? It is... Uh, difficult to move like this. Why do you look like that? I went with a simpler look today. I figured this world couldn't handle my full resolution. Guess that's fine then. You can quit if you want, you know. Never! I will never give up! You don't have to take it that far. In any case, it seems that we've finally arrived. Is this world made of jelly cubes? This is Shovel Forge. Shovel Forge? I don't see any shovels or forges. Iris said that she was focused on streaming this game lately. What's that got to do with forges? Forget about the forges and listen! This Somnium is the world of Shovel Forge. A sandbox game in which you make and move cubes to create structures on a map. I'm not playing this game. On the contrary, you already are. Oh, come on, I don't want to play. Accept the reality, Date. You have no choice. Good evening, good morning, and hello. It's Tessa, also known as Aset. You bet. I'm going to be playing Shovel Forge today. Let's dive right in. Iris's Let's Play has begun. Help me, Date! You have to help me! It's nice! They're coming! Find me, Date! Oh, a pickaxe! Lucky! What was that all about? It appears that this Somnium will not be easy like the other ones. I didn't think the other ones were all that easy. Are you ready? Let us begin. Somnium scan! Activate! 